Hello and welcome to the machine, fourth in a series of five on motion physics. Let's say that we had measured the force that a motor can generate as one newton. Is there a way that we could use this motor to pull something which weighs more than one newton? It doesn't seem like that could be possible, but this brings into physics something called a machine. And again, common English can mess you up with what we mean by a machine in physics. Generally, we think a machine is a loud contraption with gears made of metal. Not here. A machine is anything that changes the amount of force or a direction of a force, like just pulling the object across a counter rather than straight up. You might only be able to pull one newton of weight straight up, but could pull 240 newtons horizontally on a tabletop. If the weight was placed on wheels or something that reduced the friction by a great deal. So the tabletop itself is a machine, and the addition of wheels is another machine. These machines caused a mechanical advantage of 240. The mechanical advantage is a number without units. That means how much more work can be generated by using a machine compared to without. It's calculated by dividing the output force by the input. In other words, how much force you move divided by the amount of force you can generate. Notice that if you divide a number with the same units, that the units cancel out. This brings up a question. How many different ways can a force's amount or direction be changed? It turns out that there are only six possibilities. They are called simple machines. The first is an inclined plane, the mechanical advantage of which can be calculated by dividing its length by its height. So if you had a plane six centimeters long and it was one centimeter high, then its IMA, that's short for mechanical advantage without friction, or ideal mechanical advantage, would be 6 divided by 1, and that equals 6. That means without friction, you should be able to move 6 times more weight by pushing it up the plane than picking it up straight off the floor. A wedge is pretty much a plane, but it's more like two planes crammed together, and in this case, the wedge does the moving rather than something moving across its surface like with a plane. The IMA of a wedge is simply its length divided by its width. So if you had a wedge three centimeters long and one centimeter wide, without friction, it would provide a mechanical advantage of three. A screw is simply an inclined plane wrapped around a post. That means that you can calculate the IMA of the screw the same way that you do an inclined plane. In this case, the screw's thread length is the length of the plane, and the screw's height or length is the height of the plane. So you divide the screw's thread length by its height. So with a thread length of three millimeters and a screw length of one millimeter, then the IMA is three. Levers are probably the most common of the simple machines. They can come in the form of almost any object. A table surface is a lever, a carrying bag is a lever, and a pencil is a lever. There are three types depending on where the fulcrum is located. The fulcrum is the pivoting point of the lever. The IMA can be calculated for any lever by dividing the input length by the output length. The input length is the distance from the input to the fulcrum, and the output length is the distance of the fulcrum to the output, or whatever's being moved. So if you had an input length of 6 centimeters and an output length of 1 centimeter, then your IMA would be 6 divided by 1, which equals 6. The three types or classes of levers are first class, output and input, move in opposite directions and the fulcrum is in between them. Examples are can openers and crowbars. Second class levers have the fulcrum at one end and the input force at the other end. This means that the output force is between the fulcrum and the input force. Examples of these types of levers are staplers and wheelbarrows. The third class levers have the fulcrum at one end and the input force between the fulcrum and the output. Examples are golf and baseball clubs, tennis rackets, and hockey sticks. A wheel and axle is a simple machine, and the IMA for this one is calculated by dividing the wheel's size by the axle's size. That means either the radius or the diameter works. So if you had a screwdriver with a handle radius of 3 millimeters and the shaft was 1 millimeter, then the IMA would be 3. 
And the last of the six simple machines is the pulley. To find the IMA of a pulley, you simply count how many supporting strands there are for the weight being moved. Since a simple fixed pulley only has one supporting strand, there is no mechanical advantage. However, we all know that sometimes just changing the direction that you have to pull can make all the difference in how easy it is to move something. Like for example, pushing down to make a flag move up a flagpole, or pushing down to raise a sail instead of picking it up. With a movable pulley, then you've got two strands supporting the weight, and thus you would have an IMA of two. If you attach two pulleys such that one is fixed and the other one has one end of the rope attached, the rope is looped through the fixed pulley and back through the movable one, then you would have three supporting strands. This setup is called a block and tackle. You can keep looping strands back around and around if you have multiple grooves in your pulleys, and this keeps adding more mechanical advantage. Once we determine we have a simple pulley system, we can calculate the me mechanical advantage by simply counting the lines that support the load. So we have one, two, three, four. What if you have a machine with two or more simple machines that work together? Then you have what we call a compound machine. The compound machine's IMA is calculated by multiplying all of the individual IMAs of each simple machine together. Why is that? Why don't you just add them? Let's think about this. If you have an advantage of some amount, then that advantage is passed on and done to something else, not with it. So the advantage isn't added to the other. This means you multiply because you threed that six or you forward that two. So if you have a compound machine with a wedge of an IMA of three and a lever, an IMA of six, and a wheel and axle with an IMA of two, then you'd have a total IMA of three times six times two, which equals 36. So you should be able to move an object 36 times easier with your machine, excluding friction. Ah!